The third kind, third class lever, is like a hammer. A hammer is, is used a lot. See, I can, here's my fulcrum, here's my force, and here's the load. So I can hammer like this, right? And I can hammer a nail, a big nail, into a big wood, right? But you always want to use the tool and use your leverage the best, right? Because you don't want to use a lever and pick up a nail and use it like this. You ever see anybody doing that? Yeah. yeah. How's it work out for them? Not very well, right? I mean, you might as well be beating your forehead against it. Because that's about as good as you. So you want to use a lever like this, right? Because that's going to get you force. Multiply. Same thing, right? If you do it like this, nothing happens. If you use your lever, it will drive that nail right through that board. No problem. So there are, now we're going to go back to our wheel and axle. And there's all kinds of wheels and axles. You guys have ridden bicycles, right? Yeah. That's a wheel and axle. That's a simple machine. And wheels and axles have force multipliers to them, just like uh, levers. Except when you calculate it, it's slightly different. OK, I need one more volunteer. Back there in the back, you're first up. Lift these two up. Good luck. How much do they weigh? Uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit, huh? So do you think I could lift those up with a cup of water? Yeah. Yes. Yes. If I use a simple machine, I can... So there's two gallons of water here. I'm not going to do it. You are. So let's see if I take this, stand on the side over there so everybody can see. I'm going to take this simple machine and I'm going to raise this up. Is it getting harder? So it's off the table. Is it off the table? Yeah. Okay. Take that water and fill up one of those cups for me over there. Can you do that? holding it up there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For those of that doubt me, because other children have doubted me, we'll take the water out, right? Cool, I can't see. Yeah. And, and it sits right back down. So this one cup of water held up these two gallons of water. Why? Simple machine, mechanical damage. Leverage. Leverage, okay? In a wheel, we calculate a little bit different. We calculate the mechanical advantage is the radius, how far away our wheel is. This is 30 centimeters to how big how big that the axle is, which is one and a quarter centimeters. Does anybody know what the mechanical advantage of that is? Uh, yes. 30 centimeters divided by one and a quarter 24. is 24. So what that tells us, I only need 1 24th as much water here as I have here for this machine to get balanced. Okay? Now, if I keep, what if I filled up two cups, what would happen? Uh, it would go home. It would start lifting this up, right? Oh, put two cups of water in it. Start pouring the water in the cups. Start, what if I put moving water on the cup? Pull it up all the way. It starts spinning, and, and it just keep wrapping this around until it got to the top, right? Oh, so wouldn't that be cool if you could do that? Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Okay, so here's the characteristics of a water wheel. It has a large diameter wheel. This is important since somebody's going to be designing a water wheel, right? So it has a large diameter wheel. It has an axle that's connected to that wheel, and it has a water supply. And that water supply can come three different ways. Sorry, 
Ten minutes. It can come three different ways. You can have the water come underneath, like over here. We could just set this into a stream, right? And the water could be coming this way. And it would just hit those cups and it would move it, right? That is cheap and simple to build, right? Because you just build a wheel and you set it in the water. And we use this in flat, with or without heels. Here's one in Syria. See that water wheel? It's 65 feet tall. But it just sits in a river and it just turns. And it's simple. The next kind of water wheel is what we call an overshot. That's when the water comes at the top and it goes down. This is a little bit more complex because the water's flowing down, but it's it's better because it has two forces working for us. What are the two forces? Gravity, Gravity and the flowing water. So the water force is hitting the cup, and then the weight and the cup causes it to go down. So here's a big one in uh, Georgia. This is a big water wheel here. See, they build a little flew up here that went back to the stream that was up on the hill and they just dropped water over the top and then in here was this flour mill that had a big stone in it. The final kind of water wheel is a breast shot or middle shot and that's when you have kind of a little bit of each. You have a little bit of height but not very much so you send the water into the center of the wheel. This one doesn't produce a lot of force, so what they do to get a lot of force is they make the blades really, really wide. This is one in England, and they made the, the blades 22 feet wide. So that's a really big, big water wheel, right? Now you put it in a big stream, and you get a lot of force out of that halfway through. So, that's the scientific principle. You have to build a water wheel that's going to change the direction and the force from our stream. And I'll show you what our stream is in a minute. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to work in teams of two. Your, your teacher will assign the team. we got all kinds of materials over here that you'll see tomorrow. Remember, everything's going to be in water. You have to design it and build it in the back. I'll tell you, and, and Tom's going to show you a couple things in just a second. But, but the key is, is we're going to give you a problem to solve. we got some washers back there, and we need them lifted off the ground. And so Tom will show you a couple of things to start with. OK, you're going to start with, uh, here's your axle. And then we have these foam discs that are pre-cut. Uh, you will have to push the axle through the center so you get a nice, uh, I didn't do a very good job on that one, because you can see it's a little wonky, but uh, but you'll get the idea. And then we'll put them in our stand, and we have a set of pumps in each stand, so we have six different setups here. Here's your source of water, and you can have it come over the top like a, an overshot wheel. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, have it an undershot wheel, or a mid-shot wheel like this. I'd actually like to challenge somebody to build uh, an efficient undershot wheel. It's very hard to do, especially with the flow of water we get here. But it can be done. And the challenge will be to lift a cup full of these washers. You can lift that and see how much that weighs. And our specification up there, I think it says lift a, a load of 10. It doesn't say, but a, a load of 10. Uh, and 10 washers will weigh just about one pound, about half a kilogram. Uh, I think the record last week over there, 88 washers. So that's tough. Eight pounds. So we want you to be able to, to lift 10. If you do 10, then you've built a good water wheel. If you, build, if you do 10, you could probably do more than that. If you get to 30, you've done an outstanding job. Anyway, there's only one or two that got really that high up there, and they 
uh, uh, they did some clever kinds of things. The one thing that, the one hint that I will give you about your design is one of the things that is bad about styrofoam, and it's just because that's what we have easy, is this styrofoam, if you push it on there and everything else, you don't get it on there, it's a little loose. And in fact, when you played with this enough, you can see that this styrofoam turns, right? You don't want the styrofoam to turn. You want it to turn with the axle. So the way that you solve that problem is you take toothpicks, and there's lots of toothpicks, and you shove the toothpicks in right next to the axle, right next to the stick, about six or seven of them on both sides, and that will make this styrofoam real, real tight so that it will flow like this. So you can try it without it, but as soon as you see it start slipping, uh, you're going to need the toothpicks. So, what kind of questions do we have? Any questions? Okay, so this is how it's going to work tomorrow. Um, there will be a 20-minute test to start with. <laughs> and we can see this, uh, uh, we can see what engineers do is our first design hardly ever works. Hardly ever works. It never works the first time. But then what we do is we do tests, we do trials. And then what we do is we look at the trial or the test and we say, what did we do wrong? And then we go back in our team and say, well, it didn't work as well as we wanted because, and then you try to fix that problem. And then you go do it again. You might go back there three, four times. You can go back there 10 times if you want. But just keep improving. Just because it doesn't work the first time doesn't mean you fail. It just means you learn something more. Got it? Okay. All right, collectors. Um, yeah. Do you guys know who the collectors are? Yeah. Okay. Oh,